Let's play in Jim and Shafrina's play, Crash, uh, Crash Bash, Part 2. We're here in the third warp, and we are, we are going to begin going after some of the, all, of, all of the trophies here. Again, just like I have been doing, I'm going to start from left to right, so that means I will start with a ball game first, and then end with whatever new uh, the game type that the, the warp room has to offer. Alright, so here the only th one of the things different about this is beware of engine's attacks engine will appear will make a cameo appearance in this game he will appear in the middle of the, of the of the arena and he will throw balls at each individual player in a random order and I'll show that off and I'll talk about the order once I once he, he appears nothing new here the new thing here is you can collect the force field from from your cor corner post so if you're down here on the bottom you the court your left and right corner posts use it to repel balls away from your goal very useful for when engine appears but it's kind of random uh, how it appears well it, it is it is random it's uh you have to it, it could sometimes appear on one of my corner posts or one of cortex's corner posts it's uh, very random and so is the uh who engine throws the balls at first he will you know it's he won't target any one person each time he appears, it will, it will just be random. Now, if you notice, he will throw directly at you, uh, directly at you, and from the corners, uh, he will he will aim it at each individual player and the corner posts. Uh, again, how he did, when he does that is also random as well. And because he he is there, this makes it very difficult because, as you can see, the balls do not. Uh, go through his ship. You have to uh, be careful and kind of aim the balls when they are uh, when you have the chance to. You know, when once he pops up, and the way he pops up is random as well. Uh, I believe you know it's been he's the last time he appeared he was he came back quickly, but now he has he hasn't appeared for quite a while. And you can see what the force field does if you watch the other characters uh, get it. All it does is just uh, it pushes the balls away from you, and it's not that useful. Uh, it is for when you're going after a large set, you know, a large bunch of uh, balls. But if you're not, then it's not that useful because uh, you can actually lose or you know you lose track of of the force field and. You know, you'll have a, a bunch, a group of balls heading towards you, and then you could very easily end up, uh, you know, you know, thinking that you still have the the force field, and then have have a bunch of, you know, lose a bunch of points very quickly. This definitely isn't my favorite. Uh, this is my least favorite, to be on to be honest. I usually don't lose on a trophy match, but uh, when, once I come back here for the relics and the other challenges, that's when I usually lose quite a bit. But playing this this type of event is kind of difficult while commentating as well, because you have to uh, pay really pay attention to everything. You have to pay attention to, wh to where the force field appears. Uh, I, again, it is random, so you. You can't really be prepared for it. You just kind of have to sit in the middle of your of your goal and uh, be ready to you know to, to uh, try to get to it. Uh, well, I'm not too bad. I'm of course I'm doing a lot worse than Cortex is, but. Uh, everyone else is okay, and I can usually hit, well, it's a lot easier to dump them into the side goals than it is uh, head-on in, in this particular event. So you really want to try to keep someone on the sides alive so that they can throw some balls in, especially like right now. Uh, Cortex is going to try pretty hard, and it's kind of difficult too, uh, especially once a big group of them come together and then you add engines balls in there. It, it can get pretty, uh, I guess, hectic would be the right word. It, uh, you know, I mean, I, I have had, I think, 10, uh, 10 or over 10 balls on the field at once before because of engine, uh, you know, engine adding his, his in there. 
Of course, usually the balls that engine throws are usually will go into a goal. Uh, but you know, once you once you have only two people like that, and both of them are actually trying, well, you know, more often than, than not, you can actually uh, have a lot of them on the field at once. And I have had a lot of very close. Uh, close calls, especially with the relics. That's usually usually my worst times uh, dealing with a bunch, uh, you know, a group of them only having two players left that are or that are playing, uh, you know, very well and trying not to lose. Uh, but anyway, as I said, you know, hard game to to commentate, or a or a hard event to commentate over while doing. That's why I've been you know losing so many. And, but the force field doesn't work, you know, it, it's not like a, a wall that will repel the balls immediately. They can actually get pretty close to you, especially if they are traveling at a uh, good good rate of speed. So you do want to watch out and be careful. Uh, you want to watch out and be careful. Uh, and, you know, and, and look at how fast they are actually going. And you can see there, there, there are five balls that, that will stay out there at once. And you can hit X to force victory, and I'm not sure if it's either who would have won, like, you know, of course, the, if you don't win, the, the AI is scripted for each event, uh, you know, it's not, you know, spur of the moment kind of stuff, uh, while it is randomly generated, how the AI will, will, will work, I've never actually had the AI do the same thing twice before, and I've played through this game a lot, uh, but, uh, and so I'm not sure if the force victory is tied to a certain set of, um, it, like, so if something will happen, like, you know, who, w whatever character was, was going to win anyway if you had lost, or if, it, if it's by uh, kind of a, a points-based system, like a, well, you know, Cortex had less points, so he would have, you know, he would have lost. But I have, but I have seen, you know, and with the, uh, you, with the Bash games, you know, whoever has the least amount of health usually loses, and with the Pogo, well, I guess the Pogo games don't count, but, uh, you know, just, just games like that that count. But then you have the games like the Polar games, which don't have any points and don't have a health bar that, uh, you know, sometimes Cortex will win against uh, Kong and Rillaru. So you know, it's I, I think it's kind of you know whoever was uh, the, the scripted to the uh, the scripted AI character would win. But I I could be wrong. You know, like I said, I don't know to be honest. That's just what I've seen from my time playing. Yeah, I was kind of afraid that was going to be my third. Or my second victory instead of my third. Okay, as you can see, I was, I was about to talk about the force field. It, the force field, kind of at the start, is as I, as I have said, random. Usually, you, you you usually see me dart to the left, and all the other characters will usually dart to the left or to their left. But uh, it's not, you know, a for sure thing. You know, I think that was the second time Kong has got it or when it was on my right corner post instead of my left. So you really just have to kind of sit in the middle and just be prepared for, you know, for it to appear and then dive towards it instead of immediately diving to one side or the other. So then when it, if it appears on the other side, you know, you usually won't be able to get to it. But I don't, I don't really, I, I like to use the force field whenever I can, but I don't, you know, wait around and say, oh, well, if I could just get the force field, this would be so much easier. I've gotten used to not having the force field and being able to uh, play well without it. And that's uh, definitely something that if you can get used to and uh, learn how how to do, this will, this will be a lot easier on you. Well, that's nice. Rillaru won't win. And so I won't have to do this again. If if, a, if another if an AI character gets gets a trophy, you will have to get you know you'll have to win three silver cups again. So it's kind of like you just quit the level and then you or quit the event and then you then you come back into it. Uh, which 
stinks, but you know it's, uh, it's just the way the game is. So you want to be very careful about letting uh, characters win, especially on difficult games like this. Come on, get him there. We go. Okay, it's a lot better. Oh, five rounds of inballism is not something that you d that you want to do every day. But as I've said before, uh, I'm, I'm I'm a lot better at the game whenever I'm not whenever I'm just playing by myself and I'm not trying to make a let's play out of it. Uh, by far. But anyway, so we're gonna melt panic. My least favorite of the uh, four. Uh, panic or polar games. The the thing here is instead of a hollow projector robot, Uka Uka actually appears and will give you different things. Uh, he will give you, I believe, a weight. Uh, you can see here, beware of Uka Uka's beam. Nothing different here. Okay, so the only thing that Uka Uka will give you is a weight. He will also freeze you, turn you into a snowball, shrink you. Uh, you can see being frozen there. Uh, it, that does not last for very long, so you want to you want to uh, capitalize on it if you can. But if you can't, you, uh, they will unfreeze. I believe it takes three to four seconds for them to unfreeze. The way that uh, the snowball actually lasts for longer, I, I'm not sure uh, there either. But you can see whatever whatever time it was when Uka Uka. Once you can start moving in, that's what that was how long the you, the snowball would have lasted, which is nice. But uh, what Uku also does is he will freeze the uh, the uh, or he will melt the the outside of the crap. Uh, he will melt the outside of the arena. Wow, that's weird. That will sometimes happen if if someone gets frozen. Uh, okay, so I guess maybe, yeah, I guess it was four seconds, uh, about, about four seconds is when, how long it takes for you to get frozen, but, or for you to get unfrozen, but this is definitely when things get harder, uh, you know, the AI tries a lot, a, a lot more, you can, you seem to, it be, it will be more glitchy while going through, of course, you know, you can, dive off the side any you know any polar game if you miss the angle and where you want to actually go if you mess that up you can actually do it on any even on a uh, polar panic you know it, any of them you can uh, miss who you're trying to go after and just end up uh, diving right off the edge you want to be careful of it though uh, and you don't want to get underneath Uku's, Uku Uku's beam. You know, you he d it is random who he who he goes after first, but there is nothing that Uku will give you that is positive. All of it is negative, and so you want to be very careful. This is usually the first of a handful of levels that I will usually uh, have to do over again because an AI character got a whole uh, got a whole bunch got a trophy. Uh, but you know, sometimes. Well, never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, if, if the AI want, if you do lose, the AI will become very, very easy, and they will uh, tend to just fall off when during sections where usually, if you were still on the field, they would try a lot harder. Uh, which I can understand, you know, it's made for it's supposed to make it so that it goes faster and that it doesn't take as long for the AI to get done. Of course, you know, as you saw with Cortex and Rillaru, they will they will sometimes just sit there, but it won't be for very long uh, a lot of the time. All right, Cortex is nothing. Well, he hit me in the side, so you really can't pr protect yourself from it from the side. But that's one of the. This is one of the bad things about being Crash. He d Crash does not have the the power to knock people off the ice, especially once you get to Melt Panic. For whatever reason, it just seems to make it so much harder to be able to push people off. And I don't know if, if they if they change the difficulty for the the AI once you get here or what it is. But this is a very hard level to try and uh, knock people off for for whatever reason. I, and I don't know why. But you can.
can see, going up against Kong, I don't have the power to actually be able to push him off, but I can continue to, uh, while he can only push me twice, I can push him up to three times, and that's, that is one of the benefits of being Crash or Coco. Now, for whatever reason, it seems like whenever on a freshly melted uh, edge of the of the arena, you can push someone off of that, and they will immediately fall. They won't be able to catch themselves, no matter where you push them. And I don't know if it's if it's supposed to be like it's you know melted and sl and slippery and not uh, frozen yet, because it, if you do it on a section that has that hasn't uh, you know that has had time to cool cool back down, it it uh, doesn't catch people the same way. But now one bad thing about being crashed and going up against a tiny or you know a, a tiny or a Kong is that you are you are a lot smaller and so the you know therefore you can be thrown around a lot easier. But once you, if they turn to a snowball, it's pretty much over. You can move around in the snowball, but very limited, and it's not that useful to be honest. It ends up uh, uh, it it, do, it doesn't work. It, there is no benefit to actually moving around in the snowball. Sometimes, you know, you can kind of get towards the center of the arena if the other characters are fighting amongst themselves, but I've never actually been successful in keeping, out, you know, staying away from someone if they are trying to hunt you down while in a snowball, so it's uh, not that useful, but it is, you know, something you can do if you want to. Alright, so in circle areas with your color to capture the center, break the special crates to turn your squares into points, win by having the highest score when time runs out. The same controls here, the uh, same things here. Now, the thing is that, th that this takes both Pogo Gogo's idea and uh, Pogo Painter's idea, except it gives you three more, uh, well, uh, some, differ some differences between those two levels are you cannot score by making squares, you can just fill in the center of the of the squares with uh, to you know to, to gain those uh, those circles in there so that you can alright and guess the squares so that you can gain uh, a bonus from you know uh, more more points pretty much. And then you have Ripperoo here. Uh, Ripperoo makes a cameo in this game by jumping around uh, dressed as he was in Crash 2 and jumping around on his pogo stick, so I guess he's supposed to be Professor Roo. And what the TNTs will do is they will blow in a one square radius around whatever, uh, around themselves, so they will do one dot uh, in front of them to the sides. Uh, on both sides, and then on the northwest, northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast corners of, of around the the squares, the TNT squares, they will blow up and they will hit you. Uh, you have to be careful. You know, sometimes he will drop. Uh, he, he'll drop them the, them around boxes. So it's kind of if you can get a pair of uh, speedy shoes, you can get through there a lot easier. If not, then it does make it a little bit more difficult. You cannot shoot him, sadly. Uh, there, are, there have been many times when I would like to have uh, shot him. If you hit him, nothing happens. Uh, if you notice, I believe once 30 seconds, uh, once it hits 30 seconds, you will actually, uh, he will start shooting you with missiles. Uh, well, he, he, he won't go aiming for you, you know, exactly, but he will uh, start shooting missiles. And you have to be careful and watch out for those because they will definitely uh, affect you if you're not careful. And you know, just like just like any other poker game, you want to make sure that you can go after a lot of uh, the speed shoots a lot, uh, you know, as much as possible. They definitely help you out in this one. Uh, not quite as much as they would in Pogo Go Go for, for points wise, but they definitely help you get to the boxes quicker as well as uh, make bigger chunks of squares and they can get they can let you get grab some TNTs that are in a group of or uh, they will allow you to grab some boxes that are in a group of TNTs which is definitely which uh, definitely helps I'm surprised you didn't start shooting to be honest I could have swore you would have started shooting by now now if you notice 
well, there's really no point in him shooting. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, I guess I was gonna talk about the uh, boxes. As you can see, there are three boxes instead of two. This is the only this is the only level that does that. Uh, sadly, it would definitely be nice if a lot more levels would do that. It would make it a lot easier. Uh, but you know, it, it is what it is. Now, if you notice, a, a TNT box can actually mess up a, a square that you're trying to make. If a TNT box lands on the outside edge of the square that you're trying to make, it will. It, uh, the square will not actually be made, so you have to be very careful about, uh, uh, you know, about that. If you if you're expecting a big points payout from a square and there's a TNT on it, well, you know, you need to prepare uh, yourself for that in case it does happen, and you want to be obviously be careful from to stay away from the uh, TNTs. Uh, but having the ability to make squares definitely does help, you know when I was just racing Little Roo there to get to that box. If I could have made the, turned those into squares, that would have definitely been a lot more points that I could have gained instead of just what I did gain. That yeah, would have definitely helped. And now, of course, is going to get more points than me, and then I'm going to have to do this another time, and that stinks. You never want to do this more times than you have to. Maybe not. Yeah, he's going to, he's going to get some Wow. But this is definitely uh, the room that that holds a lot more of the stuff that people hate. Uh, m most of the 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 games in this or this warp room, warp room three, most people hate. Uh, like in Ballism, most people hate. Not Panic, most people hate. Uh, this one, most people hate. The the bash game, it's kind of uh, iffy. You know, it, it it just depends on what which character you pick. If you pick the right character, it'll it goes a lot easier than some characters. Ah, okay, and you can see there, you know, someone jumped on my points, and so that I wasn't that I, I couldn't get a square. There are no, you know, the edges don't help you like they did in Pogo Go Go. Sadly, that would have definitely made that would definitely make it a lot easier. But you can make up quite a bit of time if you notice the the white squares that they they fill up a large area of uh, points. You know they will go in four four different directions, and that makes it a, lot, a little bit easier, a lot easier to be honest uh, when going after them or when trying to get a whole bunch of points. But they're kind of hard to get to, and they're usually in bad areas that are not anywhere near you. Sadly, but I should be able to get to this. I got you know this the couple speed shoes early on, so I should be able to uh, get this and shouldn't be any tr any problems. Yeah, letting Cortex win a Poco game. That's that shouldn't happen until uh, the fourth Warp Rooms Poco game. Letting other people win. Cause that one is difficult. Not quite as difficult as uh, El Poco Loco, but it, it is uh, bad in its own way. Uh, but anyway, I will say the only two events in the third warp room that people don't that don't hate is the tank game for here and the new game, uh, the new game type. That's actually the easiest of the four in that uh, genre of games. So you can see here, avoid waking the penguin. The same controls, pretty much same everything as it was in. Space Bash, other than Don't Wake the Penguin. Now, I, I believe I've heard somewhere that that is actually supposed to be Pinta. Uh, I don't know if you know people just assumed it was supposed to be Pinta or if that is actually actually supposed to be Pinta. But whatever it is, it hurts. If if you let the penguin hit you, it will hurt you for quite a bit of uh, a, a, a huge chunk of your of your health if if you're not careful. But things will start to not hurt the other characters as much, you know, like that TNT should it, it, if it had been, you know, earlier on, uh, on a different level, that would have, uh, that would have taken him out in one hit. Instead, it only took a, a small chunk of his health. 
well, you'll see that more and more often. The stone crates will hurt less. The nitro crates will hurt less. The TNT crates will hurt less. Spinning, uh, however, will stay the same. So if you can spin into people, uh, you know, and their they or their health is low enough, that will definitely help out. Of course, you want to be careful. Uh, you know, the, the bad thing about waking the penguin, while if as long as you can stay away from it, it benefits you a lot more than it would than it actually uh, hurts. But you want to be careful that you don't get into like a group of explosive crates and then have the penguin spin and spin those crates into you and then uh, it, you know, it hurting you. Oh, there we go. Yeah, let me see, the penguin definitely does help. I, I would, I always suggest waking the penguin, maybe not right off the, right off the bat, you know, you try to clear out some bad boxes around you, try to go after some easy ones uh, that you can go after. And I would say, you know, wait five seconds and then, then wake the penguin, let everyone, uh, Hit, hit themselves first, get some damage passed around, and then you can start uh, uh, hitting people. But now the the ice field, or you know, I guess the little pond or lake, whatever you want to call it, that we are standing on, it is ice physics. Uh, you you do want to be careful while oh wow uh, while dealing with the ice, you know, while dealing with the ice. And you can stand on the boxes. And you, I've actually stood on TNTs and timed it just right. And killed somebody. The only thing that happened was the TNT just blew up and I just landed on the ground. It was nothing special or nothing uh, too special anyway, but it was it was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so you, you will be going slower. You'll have a, a lack of grip while walking. You know, you'll slide a lot more. So you want to uh, get used to it, especially if, if you haven't, you know, if, if you're not used to that kind of thing. But if you are, it is no problem. It is, Snow Bash is actually pretty fun, pretty easy. Uh, I would definitely save Snow Bash onward the levels that people the, the, those are the levels that people like so same thing here pretty much except use the lobbing bomb to attack from a distance and I'll uh, show off the lobbing bomb as you can see here there uh, the the battlefield has changed uh, now if you, if you look at those shot myself if you, if you look at the the lines of metal uh, squares and of course it's hurting me a lot more than I'm hurting him that is a very good thing to do if you can do it. It's kind of, it's actually kind of hard to do. But if you look at these squares as like, ro if you look at, if you look at them like rows of squares, you can throw a lobbing bomb to uh, as far away as two squares. You want to be careful though, because you can actually shoot yourself with him if you're, if you like run up right on somebody. The blast radius will hurt you too. While it won't damage you as much, you have to be careful because of your health. Uh, if your health is low enough, it will, it will definitely hurts, so you want to be very careful uh, uh, while doing that. Now you want to be careful here, I'm kind of, I was wedged between the wall and Cortex's tank. That is, I'm not sure if that's a glitch or what that is. Sometimes it, some, sometimes it can happen. You want to be careful also uh, launch, putting a mine on one of the, oh crap, on one of the squares that come up. You can see the squares that, uh, that come up are darker than the squares that stay there permanently and you know while you are crashed uh, if, if I was like someone like if, if I was tiny or Kong I could have got got in there and f uh, fought a lot more than what I did but because I, and I still think uh, Cort Crash and Coco's bullets are the worst or the weakest because of that that fact you know you you uh, you can't get in they're really close and actually fight a group of people or any or actually any one person uh, in hopes to survive. Now that could have been a tie. Uh, Kong's bullets hurt me enough that that would have killed me if I if he hadn't stopped blinking fast enough. Uh, but anyway, uh, really, what you, you know, the best thing that you can do if you are someone weak is just try to pin someone down in in a group. You know, you be on one side of the weak character. Uh, and then allow mines to, to do most of the oh, crap. I should have been paying more attention. Allow mines to do most of the work, uh, taking the taking the other characters out. Now there are taunts that you can do while in the tank, and I, I'll show off uh, crashes. Uh, he makes the chicken noise and salutes. Uh, Tiny growls and salutes. Kong laughs. 
Oh, uh, Cortex, I believe, laughs as well. I don't remember exactly what he does, uh, to be totally honest. I believe Rillaroo laughs. Dingo, I think, throws his arms up in the air. Uh, we'll let Tien... No, okay, you, got, you want... That's one bad thing about having such long-range bullets like this. Now, in a, in a situation like this, you would want to just have, you know, you, you, you'd want to go after lobbing bombs and allow those to, uh, well, if you wait long enough, you can actually see whatever characters uh, so taunt is, if you, I believe if you wait 30 seconds. Uh, I may, I believe it's 20 seconds anyway, I'm not 100% sure. I won't, I, won't, I won't waste time. I still got quite a bit to do, yeah, and I'm not uh, done with. The, I'm not quite done with the trophies yet, so I won't waste the time. Uh, let me see. I think uh, Crash salutes and makes the chicken noise. Coco whistles and I think waves. Tiny growls and salutes. Dingo laughs while throwing his arms up in the air. Cortex, I believe, laughs. Brio la uh, laughs while shaking his fist. Kong laughs. And I believe Rillaroo laughs as well. Alright, so with this, finish as many of the set number of laps as possible by being the first over the finish line or the player who is in the lead when the time runs out. Rotate your ship to face the desired direction with the directional buttons or the control stick. Press, press and hold R1 to accelerate. Press square for a speed boost. Press circle to fire a missile. Click one to gain an extra fuel for for a speed boost, and then collect the missile to shoot and uh, kind of cause the other other characters to tumble. Okay, now if you saw there, there's actually a glitch that, that sometimes will happen, and I don't, I'm not sure why exactly it happens, but if you get into a group of, of characters and they kind of uh, will. Uh, if they if they kind of uh oh what was or what is it kind of like crowd you while you're going over the the, the finish line you you can actually uh gain a lap and I have had actually had this happen to me once it's it's only been once you know usually it happens to, give to the AI characters but I have actually had it once and it did and it actually uh, ended up in my favor it was on a relic race or uh, a relic event for, the, for one of these dash games and it actually helped me end up win winning the race. Now you can see what, I, what I'm doing here. If you stay to the inside, the inside of the track, that's the fastest way to go around. Of course, you can't stay to the inside the entire time because you ha I'm not sure why Kong done it. didn't look like they were uh, really, uh, you know, kind of uh, blocking him or whatever. But, uh, you, you know, you, you want to stay on the inside as much as possible, but if, you, to go after one fruit, you want to, you, you always want to go after one fruit, you always want to make sure that you can have enough boost, or uh, enough constant boost, to be able, uh, to get around here quickly, especially if the other characters are gaining laps on you. It is very easy to lap people, and you'll see a lot of people get lapped, uh, you know, by a good amount. Usually the slower players to hit someone. As you notice, I just hit, I just uh, ricocheted my missile off the wall and hit Rillaroo, and I also ran into Kuala Kong with the boost. That is one benefit of having the boost is it will, uh, you, you'll run into another player and you'll be able to mess them up. Thankfully, no one gained a lap here. That's that's always useful. You do want to be careful though because sometimes stuff like that will happen. The Wumpa Fruit appear randomly. I believe it is randomly generated as well. Uh, the way the Wumpa Fruit appear. Uh, you know, per event or whatever, per lap, and so you, you want to be careful because of what you know, like what Cortex did. He gained a he gained a piece of one right behind me, and I had missed the missile, and he was able to boost into me and mess me up. Uh, you want to be careful, you know, with that. You want to be careful uh, swinging out really wide, going into this section with the wall, because you can actually get yourself caught and do what I did and fall off. You've noticed the other the other characters. We'll run into it as well and uh, get get caught. You want to make sure that you position yourself correctly 
so that you don't use the speed boost and go off and go off off the track. It's it's not really as hard as I'm making it seem, but it does require a bit of skill because you have to make sure that everything is just right, or you won't be able to uh, efficiently and effectively get around the track. Is there uh, those events are actually pretty hard to do, and really quickly for this boss, you need 15 trophies, 10 gems, and 7 crystals to, fight to face the tank boss. So we just need 4 of each, so I'm going to go back to Warframe 1 so I can clear that out and get all of the uh, crystals. Uh, the last crystal that we need here, then I'll go into Warframe 2 and get the gems to crit the rest of the crystals that I need. But those events are actually pretty hard just because they don't, the controls, uh, the hover, the ship that you're riding on, is very loose and it l likes to turn a lot. So you have to be care. You have to kind of measure the, the way that you turn. Uh, beware the idol's wrath. The idol in the well, it's more like a temple. But the temple in the background will uh, launch uh, nitros directed at you. You can use that to your advantage. You can uh, actually have the blast radius uh, hit the other characters. Of course. If the, I believe if the TNT or if the nitrous hits you, it's an instant death. If or, or it hurts a whole lot, but if they hit the other characters, it only hurts them a little bit. Kind of like a, a stone box or a TNT. Uh, just just look at how much damage Cortex took, and you can kind of uh, tell. You know, you watch the other the other things I'm throwing around at him. And you want to be careful because the the players will be on hard difficulty you will take a lot more damage than they will on like a stone box so you can't go into someone that's holding a stone box and spin it spin into them to damage to make to you know to try to da damage them because you want to be very careful because it will hurt you a lot more so you can only do that about two or three times before it uh, ends up neg negatively affecting you so you want to be very careful about that and time uh, you know uh, just kind of time and watch and decide when you can and can't do that kind of stuff uh, but not that hard. Is like if you're doing, if you're playing like Crash, it's definitely a lot easier than say a Tiny or a Dingo. Uh, it's, it definitely makes it a lot easier. So just because you can spin and you can spin box at the other characters and avoid the idle uh, throwing throwing stuff at you. Uh, but anyway, so your opponents will have uh, intermediate shields. So the shields that pop up. Once you die, they will actually have those. Uh, I believe it's random how they how they start, but uh, they will last only for about a, you know for a few seconds. But they last long enough. And I believe in the order is random and how they'll get it. As you can see there, you know, Rillaru started with it, then Cortex got it, and then Cortex got it again. Uh, then Rillaru got it again. Then, Cort then Cortex got it again. So that and that kind of makes it, that makes it a lot more difficult to plan where to throw the balls because you could have a ball on the front of your ship like this. Well, Cortex uh, had the shield, so if I would have thrown through them at Cortex, the the, thing, the balls would have bounced right back at me, and you know, uh, you know how that would have ended up. And so it, that is the challenge of this. Uh, it makes it a lot more difficult while trying to do this. This is actually one of my better runs going through here. I uh, usually have a lot more trouble making them lose balls and making me keep my points. But uh, I, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the the way you know the, I believe all these these events are randomly generated. Just how just how they will end up. You know, I, I've never actually had. Uh, had the shields last, uh, you know, appear in this this order before, and I, you know, played this game a, a bunch, and so that's uh, different to you know, as I said, to what I'm used to. Now you want to be careful because sometimes you know, if if you once you start killing people off and you have like uh, two dead people, the third the third AI character that, that doesn't have any points uh, that is still alive can actually have a shield as well, so the only open goal is yours, so you want to be very careful, especially if one of the other characters throws a ball into your goal. Uh, you want to be very careful. It's like here with with Rillaru. I was going to say, uh, I was hoping 
Kong would last a little longer. There we go. Okay, that's nice. Now that could have gone a lot worse, to be honest. Uh, I could have, uh, Rillaroo could have got the shield next, and that would have messed everything up. Uh, so thankfully, that was a little bit easier than what I'm used to doing. So I'm very, very, very happy for that. And uh, it, it's pretty fun, you know. It's, it's challenging. I'll, def I'll definitely say that. it's not fun, but it is challenging. So if you like that kind of challenge, it's uh, definitely something that you would you would like. Uh, but anyway, all right. So beware of the storm. Prepare for a bumpy ride. So this is supposed to be set at night. Uh, if you remember during the, uh, I believe during the trivia for this, I had talked about that. And you can see the 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 ice in you know, the arena is just moving around back and forth. So that makes it harder to knock people off. Especially once you and the players are on hard mode as well, uh, so you know they will be less. They will attack you more, and they will be a, a lot re less resilient to being knocked off. And so you just have to be careful and time everything. You want to try to go after a lot more of the uh, things that the hollow projector will will give you. You know, uh, sometimes you can get a, a weight. You've seen two weights killed, uh, killed two people. I guess I knocked Kong off myself, but uh, the weight killed Cortex. And it actually would have been better if Cortex would have survived. And that's uh, a good uh, trick to help you if you have trouble with the... Uh, with the... Oh, come on. Really, that's... Oh. And... I doubt it's going to last for 15 seconds, but we'll give it a shot. I'm not sure how long the wait actually lasts for 10 seconds. Hey, that's that's nice. Uh, you know, you want if you that's something that you can actually do is Cortex. Uh, if you have Cortex with a gem or a crystal that you have trouble with, you want to try to knock out. Uh, well, just save the little guy for last. You know, try to knock out the big people first, and then save the little guy for last. That'll make this uh, so much easier. Okay, so we've got all the... What did we need? Seven crystals, I believe. Four, uh, or maybe it was just six. Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe it was just six. Uh, but anyway... Well... I don't remember. I think it's 10 gems, 6 crystals. Okay, so see here, win by being the first to decrease your score to 0 in the allotted of time. But yeah, I have 150, they have 90. That shouldn't be too difficult as long as I can get a bunch of speed shoes very quickly and a and rapid succession. That will this will make this that will make it a lot easier for me to knock down the uh, the points that I need to. Uh, you know, try to go after you don't. Of course, you don't want to go out, go out of your way for speed shoes, but they definitely help. So if they are kind of along a path like this, you know, I there was quite a few of these uh, double arrows. If you can go along a path of those, that will definitely help you out. Want to watch out for Rillaroo. He can definitely just all of a sudden score a, a whole bunch of points and end up ruining your... Oh, really? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Scared me there for a second. Almost thought I didn't, uh, almost thought I didn't make it. Phew. Wasn't that bad, just, uh, I just, this, uh, you know, the, I scored the points and then nothing happened and, uh, but anyway, so. Okay, I'm just gonna say it's six. Yeah, uh, it's six crystals, and if I have to come back, I have to come back. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but anyway, so we'll go and continue on with these. Uh, just with Pogo Go Go, just remember to try to go after double arrows. Stay with your own edge, and try to go after speeches as much as possible. That will definitely make this. A, that will definitely make it a lot easier. But anyway, so uh, with this, just uh, the remember. The trophies are 
on easy, sort of, you know, or their definition of easy. Then you have the other, and then you have the gems, which are set on medium, and then cr crystal is hard. And if you if you look at it like that and think about it like that, uh, that will kind of help you prepare for for how difficult this will be. Uh, usually with medium, like on a on a event like this, boxes will hurt hurt you more. It hurt, will hurt them less. They will try to target you more, and the boxes will just all around hurt the other characters less. Like a TNT won't be nearly as effective as it was during the trophy during the trophy or during the uh, and stone boxes same thing you know they'll hurt for a lot less so if you're used to the boxes hurting at a certain uh, a certain amount well you have to be careful of that so win by defeating the other players in a lot of time so uh, instead of a minute 30 we have 40 seconds and this can actually be pretty diff uh, pretty difficult because this is you know the the beginning uh, the beginning event and the, Especially if you're using someone like Crash or uh, Cortex or Brio Coco, uh, this this can actually be get pretty difficult just because of uh, the because as I said, the bullets will hurt you more. It will hurt your bullets will hurt them less. And I mean, yeah, you know, the bullets are 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 already hurting them less, but. Uh, you want to try to rely on the, the mines as much as possible. You know, you can drop them around. That will help you out in the long run. Uh, you don't want to let them get any fruit if you can. You want to be careful uh, throwing the, the mines down in areas where you can't get away from very easily. Uh, just try to pick out the weakest people and then go for them and then allow the stronger people to fight amongst themselves you know try to pin someone in a corner w w so that they can get uh, so that they can get affected by the uh, you know any mines or anything that may be around if you notice there if you let cortex and brio f fight amongst themselves and then you go after Rillaroo, that makes it a lot easier because Rillaroo's bullets are the weakest but they'll still hurt you, you know, by quite a bit. So you have to be careful of that. But if you can kind of sit on your 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 side and let Rillaru come to you instead of going towards him, just shoot at him as as you're coming up, or you know, as he's coming up, dodge his bullets. That makes it a lot easier, and you can actually hurt him a lot more by doing that instead of going after Cortex or uh, Kuala Kong. But anyway, so go after the last gym. Uh, in, with in ballism, and then I'm gonna go. Then I'm going to defeat the boss. This should be the last thing that I need. I believe it is ten gems, seven or ten gems, six crystals. I believe. All right. So defend the goal. The odds against you. All I'm down is by five points. But if you remember going here, going through here with a trophy, that that uh, doesn't mean a whole lot. I could have uh, thirty and still end up losing. Uh, but anyway, I just try to play a little bit better. And as I said, you know, medium difficulty, the the players will or the AI characters will try harder. They will uh, throw more balls towards you. They will have balls past them less, and they will make uh, better use of the force fields. You know, they will try to angle more instead of just deflecting them away from their goals they will actually try to throw them into the other into your goal really uh, you know to the other players goals but pretty much towards yours if it's like Kong or uh, Rularu you know Cortex can't do a whole lot the only thing he can do is just uh, kick them at me and while that is effective it's not quite as effective as just uh, you know he can't use the the force field to repel them into my goal like uh, a Kong or a Rularu could but you know the, the the balls still do repel in front of you, but just not they're not it's not as effective as uh, throwing them into you know the side goals. Now, uh, as I said before, you know the right side for well at least for me anyway the right side goal is the easiest goal to dump balls into. 
and I use and once if Kong is gone or you know Tiny or whoever's standing there or wh whoever's sitting there is gone, that usually makes it a lot harder for me. Wow. Ooh. Almost lost that one. Mm. But I didn't, <laughs> and I'm happy. So anyway. So as long as I have enough crystals, and I still think I do, I can go fight the boss now, which is good. Oh. Seven crystals, wow, okay. Now I could just get a crystal from here, but I would like to just go ahead and stay, you know, try to clear out the warp rooms that I've already visited, and then just keep moving up like that. I know it doesn't really... It, seems to drag the video out long, you know, it takes time for the loading screens and all that, but, uh, yeah, you know, that's just the way that I want to do it, so, uh, you know, if anyone doesn't like that, I do apologize in advance, but I'm going to continue to do that. Alright, so score the most points in one go to win, so what you have to do is you have to make the highest score in one, at one time, you can't, you can't add up scores like, you know, we, we, you have been before. You ha it has to be a one-time, really high score to be able to uh, make it. And uh, you may you may think that's difficult. Well, no, not really. If you can, you know, just just think big. That's the only thing you have to do. Just stay towards your stay towards your your edge, and then try to just go after uh, uh, speed shoes as much as possible. Anything really over 33 or 35 really can't be beat by the AI. The AI is on on a higher difficulty, so they, what they will do is they will try to crush, you know, they will try to step in your points a lot more, and they will try to uh, make big scores, but I, I have rarely lost whenever I could make a 33 or higher. I've never had anybody get any higher than that. Uh, the highest I've ever seen anyone go was a 32 uh, by, that Rillaru made once. Uh, but you know that's that was that was a one-time thing. It's rare. I rarely see the other characters go over 30, to be honest. So you know, just get speed shoes, uh, arrow, the arrows, uh, the purple arrows will definitely help you out. That will make it a lot easier, just because they can cover more ground than you can. Try to get try to go after double arrows will make it a lot easier. But you can see there, you know, they they will uh, try to hurt you a lot a lot more than they would normally. But there you go, you know, 18, 19, 15. Not too bad. Uh, but anyway, that's actually pretty easy, uh, pretty fun. It's not too difficult, uh, you know, because I like to go after big points myself, or just because I don't like to go, you know, sit in one little corner and make a whole bunch of nines or a whole bunch of sixteens. I like to go after speed shoes, arrows, and make a big score it, it, it once and so uh, it, that's actually an easy event for me alright so it would seem that Aku Aku seems that this tournament is not just you know a battle between good and evil and the, the crystals kind of, uh, you know, early on this, uh, destroy the enemy construction, then defeat Komodo Mo and Komodo Joe. So they return as an enemy here. Mo was in Crash. Uh, crash Team Racing, but Mo was not there. And so this is the, uh, you know, this is an, ev uh, an event. Uh, this is the first time since Crash 2 that they were both present as an enemy together. Uh, but the crystals seem to play a larger role in the series now than they did before. You know that was, uh, of course, their you know their significance was was known in Crash Two and Crash Three. But they just you know from here on they just seem to play a larger a larger role instead of just being a just something to collect. Now as you, now as you can see here. Uh, what, what we've fought before is the spiked balls that uh, Kong and 
Tiny Have, and then there's Rocket Launchers that we will be that we will see in the next tank of tank event. Uh, it, you know, uh, these that we have here, uh, they will be a a fuel thing that we can, that you can get. Now uh, we do have the the rocket launcher here, and you can see what they shoot is the uh, that you know the laser blast that uh, was shooting at me before and made me take so much damage. Now it's kind of hard to actually hit them. You have to be, I believe, right up on them to be able to hit them. You know, of course, you can blow them up with a mine, but only only uh, once and if you end up losing uh, you, you can't pin them in, you can't pin them into a corner and make them stay there for the for the mine they will run away before that you can make them shoot shoot each other that is a, that is a great way to make them hurt themselves if you can uh, say if you could pin him up against there he would uh, get get blown up by it there's really nothing you can do with this you know you, there, no one character has an advantage with this particular event. I think it's actually if you, if you can get far enough away from them, the the longer the, the farther the rocket travels, the more speed it will build up, and the the worse it will damage them. I believe uh, you can use the rockets to blow up the the rocks that are guarding. You know that, that they can use to guard you and them as well. So you want to be careful that you know when and where you want to blow them up. Yeah, I, th I think it is range instead of being up right close onto them. And, you know, that, that worked. So, yeah, I believe it is range rather than uh, being right up, right close on them because the rockets have to have enough time in the air to be able to damage, uh, to damage the other, well, to, you know, anybody. It, it works on the, this next, uh, this next boss, or this next tank game, the last tank game tank game, or well, I guess it's just the third tank game in it, uh, this is where you'll see the, where you will see the, the rockets in a regular game, and you'll also, uh, you know, you can gain quite a bit of time there as well if you, uh, use the, you know, if you sit, sit back far enough and then you can blow them up, blow them up blow them up like that. Well, now here, once you get into Warp Room 4, you have the ability to go after the gold relics. I won't be going after any gold relics right now, but once I clear this Warp Room out and then fight the boss, we will uh, go after the, the relics then. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about the trivia for the levels that I've done so far. Endballism is the 10th arena in Crash Bash. It is the arena that Dr. Engine shoots balls in the center. All players start with 20 balls, and like other ballistics games, it is possible to get shields. Uh, trivia the arena name is a pun on the word symbolism. Okay. Uh, let's see, Melt Panic. Melt Panic is a polar push mini game in Crash Bash. Uku Uku will be melting the edges of the ice, making the arena much smaller. Should the player run underneath Uku Uku, they, will, they shall be affected with one of the following. Freezing the player and rendering them unable to, to do anything until it wears off, they can still be pushed around by the other players. Turning the player into a big snowball in this state, a player can move very slightly, but they are very easy to defeat. Shrinking the player's size, this makes it easier to be pushed off, and giving the player a 50 pound weight on their head, this can be passed to, to other players as usual. No trivia for this particular level, so we'll go to El Poco Loco. El Poco Loco is the 12th arena in Crash Bash. By looking at its name, one can quickly assume it's a pogo stick level in this level all normal rules apply the only difference is that ripper Roo comes onto the field and lays out tnts or shoots missiles he will move around in a circle the player can bounce in a square to fill it up but unlike the other s other square levels they must get a box to cash in their coins it is based on the motorcycle levels of crash bandicoot reward that is something that i forgot to mention but you can see the gas station uh in the top right of the screen while bouncing around in the Crystal Challenge, the motorcycle from Crash Bandicoot 3 warped and the alien sign are present. The level's name is a pun on the restaurant El Polo Loco. This is the this is the minigame where Ripperoo makes his first cameo in the game. Uh, we'll go to 
Snow Bash next. Snow Bash is the 13th arena in Crash Bash. In this arena, Pinta Penguin sleeps in the center. If Pinta, Pinta is disturbed, he will wake up and spin attack from the center, sending off face flying. Like Space Bash, the power ups are the Aku Aku Mask, the Purple Z, the Speedy Shoes, and the 50, uh, the 500 pound weight. No trivia for here, so we'll go to Metal Fox. Metal Fox is the 14th arena in Crash Bash. This is a tank stage, very similar to Desert Fox in this arena. Metal walls will rise and fall between the blocks in a set pattern. Also, bomb power-ups will occasionally spawn, which, when taken, will allow the player to fire three bombs, which can fly over the walls and cause massive damage. Uh, no trivia. This level so we're to Dot Dash. Dot Dash is the 15th arena in Crash Bash. It is the one. It is one of the first racing arenas where each player gets 10 laps. The music here is a remix of Dingo Dial, seen from Crash Bandicoot 3. The Japanese version of the game, the music to Dot Dash, is changed to a remix of the Infernal Gallop from uh, Jacquees, Oakenbox, Orpheus, and the Underworld. Alright, so we'll go to the Big Bad Fox. Big Bad Fox is the name of the Komodo Brothers boss fight in Crash, Crash Bash. On the, on the first round, the brothers are riding a large war post that's divided into three stages. Your tank will be equipped with bombs. Phase 1 fires large spiky cannonballs from three separate cannons. Phase 2 consists of full turrets that shoot blasts of green energy. Phase 3 summons two missile launchers on each side. The warship that follow the player's movements until they shoot the missile. In the second round, after their engine is blown up, they will fight to the death and with their tanks, and your tank will be equipped with an infinite amount of missiles. Alright, so that's uh, all the trivia and everything for the levels I've done so far, so thank you for watching. The challenge of the video is, how many shots did the Komodo Brothers shoot, me, shoot at me from their, uh, from their, you know, turret wall? Uh, you know, how many times did they shoot the spike ball, the green energy blasts, the missiles, and how many times did they shoot themselves? Or n not at themselves, but not. Like, how many energy shots did they shoot by themselves? Well, just just to make it a lot more simpler, simpler, how many shots were fired during the entire bad box, big bad box boss fight for myself and from the Komodo Brothers wall and themselves? So, thanks for watching. Next time we will be, uh, I will go through the fourth warp room and clear it and then I'll go go and fight the boss just like I did this time. So until then, later everyone.